Welcome to this CodeSim tutorial. So for this tutorial, we're going to look at an analysis of the Android codebase. Android, as you can see here on the CodeSim dashboard, is a fairly large codebase, approximately 3 million lines of code, and most of it is written in Java. So the first step when I look into a new codebase is that I always start with the hotspots. So let's see what 3 million lines of code look like at a glance. Let's click on hotspots and CodeSim will load in the hotspot analysis and the things you see here are the top level packages in Android. So this is a hierarchical visualization that follows the folder structure of your code. A large system like Android may have many many hotspots so we need to find a way to prioritize them because we cannot act on all of them at once. And this is something that CodeSync can do for us, we just need to tell it so. So let's click on refactoring targets here at the top. And now CodeSync prioritizes a smaller number of hotspots for us. Let's investigate one of them. Here inside Android services, we have a hotspot called Activity Manager Service. Let's click on it to get a little bit more information. If we consider the name of that hotspot, it's interesting because it has kind of two non-descriptive names in one. Both manager and service in isolation kind of indicates a unit with low cohesion. And now we combine them. And if we combine that with the fact that this file contains 20,000 lines of code, we might indeed suspect that it might have a few behaviors too much. The next thing we want to find out is that how did it get to 20,000 lines of code? What's the overall trend? And this is something we see here at the bottom of this pane where we see the complexity trend as measured over the recent years. And as we see here, it's a pretty linear increase in complexity. So this means we have a file that we need to work with often and it's already complex and as we work with it, it accumulates more and more complexity. Now, of course, you can dig much deeper into this by clicking on trends here which takes you to a more detailed complexity trend view, we can start to investigate what actually happened at different points in the evolution of this file. You can even diff the different parts of the complexity trend and find out what kind of changes that led to the accumulation of complexity. So based on what I've shown you so far, we are likely to have found a file that's in need of our intention. The reason I say that is because we have a complex piece of code that we need to work with often, and as we do, it just keeps accumulating complexity. So, where do we start if we want to reverse this complexity trend? Well, let's get back to our actions here, where we started. My first step when I investigate the hotspot, is that I request a code review from CodeSync. And CodeSync comes with a built-in code reviewer. So all we have to do is to request it. So let's press code review down here. And now a separate window opens up where CodeSync presents its overall finding as it reviewed the activity manager service in Android. And if we look at these findings, we will note a common theme. The first thing is that CodeSync says that the different methods inside this hotspot, they have a pretty high average complexity. And this basically means that if we pick up a method at random inside that file, it's likely to be complicated in the sense that it has lots of different conditionals and loops, which all indicate some missing abstractions. The next finding is a bit more worrisome. CodeSync says that it has identified a number of cases where this hotspot shows deeply nested logic. Let's have a separate look at that finding. So deeply nested conditional logic is one of those coding constructs or coding styles that has a very high correlation to defects. So the more nested logic you have, the harder it is to reason about the code and hence things might go wrong. And we see an example here, which is from uh, our Android hotspot. And we see an if statement that's nested inside a for loop. And of course, we have other if statements nested below that. 
This means our code forms the dreaded arrow pattern. So with that covered, if we return to our code review findings, we see that for deeply nested log logic, CodeScene prioritizes the function compute oom edge locked, whatever that is, because it has a nested condition on depth of eight. And if this was the only finding, this is where I would start to pay off the technical depth. I would start to abstract away a lot of those chunks of behavior that are nested under each other. However, in some cases, like here, we see that in, the, in addition to this problem, there are 68 other functions with deep conditional logic. So that means we have a huge challenge ahead of us. It also means that we need to prioritize all those 68 functions. Where do we start to refactor? Because we want to do refactoring as a small iterative process so that we continuously improve the code rather than have a big bang rewrite. The way I do this in CodeScene is that I use CodeScene's X-ray analysis. You can launch it from the hotspot page by clicking the X-ray button, or if you're already at the virtual code review, you just click the link here. And what happens now is that CodeScene goes into the Activity Manager service hotspot, it parses the code, and it looks for hotspots on a method level. And this is the list I typically use to prioritize refactorings. So in this case, I would start with the handle message method, which we see has been modified 98 times just over the past year. So 98 different commits to a single method. That means any improvements we can do in ease of understanding and code readability are very likely to pay off in the short term as well. And we see that this method has grown to become pretty large, 500 lines of code, which is quite a lot for a single method, isn't it? And even worse, we see the cyclomatic complexity, that is how many different branches and decisions points do we have in that method. That number is at 106. So basically 106 if statements inside a single method. This definitely sounds like a method with quite low cohesion, and it's likely that it will benefit from being split up into several different methods that we can then combine together to a higher level abstraction that is much more readable. Hopefully, your own code is in a much, much better shape. But still, what you want to do next is to make sure that any improvements that you do, that they have a real effect. And for that purpose, we have built something into CodeScene that we call Code Biomarkers. And Code Biomarkers is a metaphor that we took from the field of medicine, where a biomarker is something that can indicate the presence of a particular disease. So we basically take each hotspot that we identify and stick a set of probes into it and see what comes out. And then we aggregate those different biomarkers into an overall score so that we can measure trends. Let's have a look at how Android plays out. So you see the trend here. You see that, yeah, the first hotspot is our activity manager service. And last year, this scored on E. The biomarkers go from A to E, where A means we didn't find any particular problem in the code, and E kind of indicates that we might have severe maintenance problems in that part of the code. So we can see here that basically all the hotspots, the top hotspots here, score in the highest category, which indicates particular maintenance problems, and we don't see any improvements at all over the past year. So what this data basically tells us, together with our earlier investigation, is that this is a code base that would definitely have benefited from some improvements, maybe even a couple of years ago. But we cannot do much about the past, so it's better to start those improvements now than never. Finally, before I leave you for this tutorial, I would like to show you one more code base where we see some more dramatic biomarkers, so that we get an idea of how we can use them. So the code base I want to show you now is Entity Framework Core from Microsoft. It's a .NET code base, which I think makes a nice contrast to the Java code in Android that we just looked at. Mm -hmm. Now, we have exactly the same, same measures and same analysis, no matter what programming language you use. So let's have a look at the code biomarkers here for Entity Framework. Oh yes, this looks a bit more dramatic than for Android. 
The first thing is interesting, we see that query test base or hotspot in this code base has a green bar next to it. This hints at a recent improvement. And we see that last year, this query test base hotspot scored a C. And it also scored a C last month. But now we have managed to do some kind of improvements to it, so we're down to a B, which means we have successfully managed to improve our particular hotspot. And we can verify that by looking at the complexity trend. Wow, you see, this is quite a dramatic shift. They went from 7,000 lines of code down to just 300. So if you look at the code in this case, you will see what they actually did was that they took all the application logic from this class and put it in different modules so that you get a better overview of the whole API of the query test space. You can also use the code biomarkers to catch growing problems. So let's look at hotspot number five here relational query model visitor, where we see that last year this one scored a C, and now it's down to an E, which indicates severe maintenance problems. So the last thing I wanted to show you is that once you get used to those biomarkers, you want to share it with your colleagues. Because one of the prerequisites to actually be able to control and pay off technical debt regularly is to make sure that everyone has a shared view of what the code base actually looks like. So CodeSync comes with a set of monitor views, as we call them. So from here, you can just click on the link of the project here, go to history, and then we have something called biomarkers monitor. Let's launch that one. And what happens now is that you get a view that's adapted to be shown on a TV screen in the office. And this view will auto update. It will rotate through all of your hotspots and present the most recent results on each one of them. So now you can join in with your colleagues and celebrate once you've successfully managed to improve a hotspot. Thanks for spending this time with me in this tutorial. I wanted to show you how you use CodeSync to identify and prioritize technical depth, and I wanted to share the mini process I use to investigate the particular findings I made. If you want to read more, please check out our blog where we have a bunch of different case studies. And as always, feel free to contact the CodeSync support if you have any questions, and we'll be happy to help you out.